Hello, everyone who has joined us today. I'm Olga Tamanova. This is uh, Ukraine Media Center, and we will have our traditional briefing right now uh, about the events on the front lines and uh, the events in the defense uh, field. Uh, we will start with Anna Muller, Deputy Defense Minister. I'm glad to uh, greet you again. So if you're probably noticing that I'm coming with lots of uh, papers each time, we are doing our best to inform about the work uh, of the military in as much detail as possible. So we will have a representative of the armed forces after me, and you will hear the detailed information on the front lines. Today is the 99th day of uh, this uh, great liberation war, or at least the part of it that has started on February 24th, because we have this war since 2014. We uh, have uh, heroes uh, among our militaries, we have hero cities, and after the completion of these uh, 100 days that we will celebrate tomorrow, we can also call ourselves as the hero nation. We have survived the atrocities that no one in Europe has seen for mm, quite a long time. So it's been a hundred days since uh, everyone has learned what Russia truly is. They have uh, the uh, uh, most modern uh, missiles, but uh, they are uh, simply uh, plundering and stealing from people's hopes. They have geopolitics, but uh, they are uh, not taking care about the dead bodies of their troops here in uh, from Lviv to Kharkiv. And actually, uh, all the world is joining us uh, in this fight. Over this uh, 100 days, we have made a, a considerable step in the establishment of our nation. Unfortunately, we do not know the final date of this war. Uh, unfortunately, we uh, will not uh, be able to say that we are uh, one day uh, closer to the end, uh, like uh, the uh, draft military are saying. So uh, this is a military calendar, and uh, over this 99 days, we can make some conclusions already. And these conclusions will be made by many people tomorrow. So this is a symbolic number. And uh, we can say that the key uh, target of the Russian Federation uh, is the destruction of uh, the Ukrainian nation. Uh, the Russian Federation is uh, not uh, ready to uh, step back. It is getting ready for a long-term war. Russia is uh, losing not only its people, uh, which it doesn't really care about, but also it's losing its weapons and military equipments. Right now they are already used to use uh, lots of old equipment and also to strengthen uh, their uh, production capacities. Uh, they are uh, right now already doing this uh, with uh, short guns and uh, some of the military equipment. We are uh, noticing more uh, frequent missile attacks over the last weeks uh, in the west, uh, in the east and the south of Ukraine, but in other regions of Ukraine, Russian missiles uh, are also seen these days. The training uh, that is happening in Belarus and 
also the uh, uh, war in fire in Chernihiv and Suma region and the situation in the Transnistrian region of Moldova where uh, Russia has its own controlled troops as well. Uh, most probably uh, these are uh, the pieces of the puzzle of some uh, bigger picture uh, the um, Russian Federation has in mind and the intention is probably to prevent Ukrainians from the possibility to uh, regroup. Uh, the Russian Federation uh, does not have any considerable uh, results of uh, their offense. Uh, they are basically using the Syrian scenario. They are destroying our communities altogether. Now some uh, traditional information that we are uh, providing on a regular basis about the activity of uh, the Ministry of Defense. Let us start with some international news. Yesterday uh, there were lots of positive news updates. There was a new package of support for Ukraine announced uh, for $700 million. And Joe Biden has emphasized that MLRS systems uh, will be included. and. Uh, Ukraine has spoken on many occasions uh, about the necessity of these systems for us and right now Ukraine has uh, some uh, steps forward uh, in this regard. Uh, the president of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, and the minister of defense, uh, Alexei Reznikov, were speaking about this uh, since late March. We are grateful to uh, the United States and uh, the support uh, they are uh, providing uh, to Ukraine is very valuable. As usual, we are not unveiling the details about uh, the weapons and equipment provided from the US, just as uh, from the UK and Poland, which are also supportive as well, and the partners in Germany as well. The Ministry of Defense believes that the best comments about uh, the weapons and equipments are coming from the battlefield, from our military who are using the equipment. Some info about the work we have completed in May. Uh, the Minister of Defense took part in 30 international events. Uh, for instance, uh, the second meeting in the Rammstein format. There were uh, some uh, uh, obligations taken by the parties and also uh, on Sunday, uh, the minister spoke to uh, the uh, Parliament Assembly of NATO and also uh, this week there were discussions with uh, representatives of uh, 10 countries. So these are uh, the uh, outcomes of successful work uh, which is led by the President of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky. Uh, speaking about the weekly uh, updates, uh, about uh, the uh, provisions for uh, the military. So over the last week, the Ministry of uh, Defense has delivered for the needs of the armed forces over 26,000 uh, uh, armed vests, uh, 20,000 helmets, uh, 20,000 pairs of uh, shoes, and uh, also uh, a similar number of uh, the military kits. So. Uh, by the late uh, April, we had 50% of uh, armed rests uh, delivered by volunteers and international uh, support. Uh, right now, in May, we can see that 65% uh, of uh, the protective rests are delivered by the Ministry of Defense. We still are closely working with uh, charitable foundations and international organizations. Speaking of uh, the uh, financial uh, part, speaking of uh, the finance provided by uh, the, the Ministry of Defense. Actually, uh, the military themselves are getting the money through their military unit. Over the last five months, the financial 
uh, provisions for uh, uh, the military amounted to uh, 232 billion hryvnias, uh, which is uh, 3.8 times more than in the entire previous years. Uh, the expenses for military equipment uh, were 5.6 times higher uh, than uh, uh, was uh, originally intended for the 2022 uh, budget. This is the price of war. Also for the repairs of the equipment, we have uh, provided 15.8 billion hryvnias. In the ministry, uh, there is quite a strict system of control for uh, the defense spending because we understand that the government is uh, providing uh, considerable funding and uh, there should be as transparent and effective use of this money as possible. Also, uh, today we have uh, news updates uh, from the legal standpoint. Our legal service is effectively uh, protecting the interests of uh, the government in the uh, international courts and we already have uh, the first instance uh, decision about uh, bringing back uh, two and a half uh, thousand uh, hectares of uh, uh, land uh, to the Ministry of Defense. Uh, the uh, land uh, that was taken over illegally. So uh, this um, uh, this is uh, the outcome of the three court rulings in uh, Odessa original court. Also, 1,000 square meters uh, of uh, uh, property were brought back, and uh, uh, this uh, is uh, done by the uh, Western. Uh, uh, court uh, that has resumed uh, the uh, rights of property of uh, uh, the Ministry of Defense. Also, in the first instance, we got uh, the uh, decision for 6.8 uh, million hryvnias of uh, fines to be uh, collected by the Ministry of uh, Defense for uh, 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 not following the contract conditions by the contractors. And again, if uh, these uh, decisions come in force, this money will become available to the government budget. Now, speaking of uh, the um, uh, costs, uh, the ungrounded costs uh, for uh, the use of gas, uh, 30 million hryvnias. Actually, uh, the money has been uh, brought back. Uh, the decision has uh, came into force, and uh, this was a decision made uh, in May, on the 18th of May. Also, we uh, have uh, uh, stopped uh, the attempt to transfer from government property for oh, these are the lands in Odessa. So these are 4.3 uh, hectares uh, on the uh, artilleryski lane. So it's quite a lengthy story, but uh, quite notable as well. So people were brought in to perform uh, the uh, works. Uh, they uh, have uh, signed uh, shell agreements, uh, received loans, and then faked the bankruptcy. And the idea was to get not only the uh, uh, property, not, o not only the premises, but also the land uh, or four hectares in Odessa, which was quite valuable. So again, the Ministry of Defense managed to uh, stop this attempt, and uh, this is a court ruling of May uh, 26. And uh, another uh, good uh, updates block is coming from the uh, healthcare uh, department of our work. So 
because of uh, the high losses of blood, people with heart injuries uh, usually have a lethality up to 90%. There is a very high likelihood of losing one's life in such a case. But our uh, healthcare professionals are uh, working hard to save people and in uh, one of uh, the field hospitals it was possible to save a person with a penetrating wound of hearts and so uh, the military surgeons and anesthesiologists were able to save the person's life right now the uh, person is in the rehabilitation and he only has a little uh, scar uh, on his chest and uh, a little piece of iron that uh, is uh, in fact the bullet that was inside of him thank you and we are inviting uh, general alexey Hromov, a deputy head of uh, the head operative uh, department of uh, uh, the general staff uh, you will be able to ask you questions after all the presentations hello Today, my purpose is to present uh, the uh, current situation on the battlefields in our country and also share some views uh, of uh, uh, the general staff. The enemy continues full-scale aggression against our country. The main purpose is, as before, to have full control over the Nesk and Luhansk regions. Right now in Kharkiv axis, uh, the main uh, effort of the enemy is intended to hold uh, their uh, current positions and to hold our troops uh, from advancing to uh, the Russian border. Uh, the enemy is uh, using a fire, uh, the uh, multi-launch uh, rocket systems, uh, especially in uh, Sirkunip, Tomnik Peremuha and uh, uh, Prudyanka, Ruski Tishki, Stari Salkiv uh, districts. Uh, the enemy is uh, also using artillery against our troops, attempting once again to improve its uh, tactical positions, but in vain. In the Slavyansk axis, the main effort of uh, the enemy is to hold the positions, to do the uh, reconnaissance, and also affecting our troops by fire. The artillery shelling was happening in Vernopilia, Kurulka, Dohenka, and Dolina. In uh, Donetsk operational region, the enemy uh, has also attacked the position of our troops along uh, the contact line. It's uh, using uh, the uh, uh, MLRS, it's uh, using uh, mortars, it's uh, intending to destroy our fortifications. The main efforts are in uh, Leman, Severodonetsk and uh, Bakhmut, Texas. And a few words about the situation there. In Leman, uh, specifically in Svetohirsk, Shurova, Stary Karavan, and uh, Raigarat, uh, the attacks were happening in Alexandrovka, Studenok, Alexandrovka, Sosnova, and uh, uh, Novoselivka, Yerovas. The preparations are made for the advance on Svetohirsk. In the Severodonetsk uh, axis, uh, the enemy is using all kinds of weapons and equipment, including aviation. Uh, the main uh, battles are happening in Lysychansk and Severodonetsk, especially um, serious fights in uh, Severodonetsk and in the axis of uh, Skolonivka Borivsky. In Bakhmut, uh, with the purpose to uh, push our forces uh, out. Again, the enemy is using all kinds of weapons and equipment. Missiles are used against Kamashovaha, uh, Zolote, Belohorivka, Volodymyrovka, Pokrovsky, and Solidar. The enemy uh, using the effects of uh, this fire uh, tries to get uh, full control of Kamashovaha.
uh, and also in order to improve its position uh, the enemy uh, is uh, making yet another attack on Mikolaevka and uh, Avrubivka also Vasilivka Berestove and Nasilivka Vilohorivka the combat operations continue in Adievka Novopavlovsky uh, and Zaporizhia the enemy is not uh, active but uh, still mortars and artillery are used against our troops in Mikolaev there are no active combat operations but the enemy is uh, taking effort to uh, hold uh, the control of uh, Kherson region they are using engineering equipment and uh, making sure it provides uh, supplies for its troops uh, also bridges were exploded in Davidov Brit at Velika Alexandrovka uh, the enemy uh, is defending uh, near uh, Davidov Brit and Andreevka it is uh, using uh, electronic uh, warfare tools and is improving engineering conditions of its conditions uh, it looks like in the future the enemy intends to hold these positions and to hold our troops uh, there. In uh, Volin and Padilla uh, there are no signs of uh, preparations of the enemy of, uh, uh, for the attack. The main efforts uh, of forces uh, in Belarus uh, are right now concentrated on containing, uh, collecting intelligence. Also some mining of bridges and uh, roads is uh, happening along the Ukrainian uh, border in the northwestern part of it near the Brest Oblast. There is still a threat of missile attacks from the Belarus territory. In Siversky Axis uh, the enemy is not active in combat operations. There are no signs of uh, preparations of troops but in Bransk and Kursk regions the troops are kept uh, most probably to keep our uh, troops busy also in Chernihiv and Sumy uh, there are shellings of uh, borderline uh, communities uh, there are um, risks of uh, attacks on infrastructure objects uh, in the future in order to hold our troops uh, there and uh, also to to instill fear there are no signs of uh, uh, offense of the russian federation in the bessarabia region in the black sea area the enemy continues to take action to um, block uh, navigation and uh, right now there are two carriers of uh, high precision missiles uh, 16 missiles in total are kept uh, active since may 26 uh, the enemy has uh, conducted 59 missile attacks and 36 uh, aircraft attacks mainly against uh, the transport infrastructure such as railway since the beginning of this war uh, the enemy conducted 5722 uh, air raids and over 500 uh, Iskander and uh, Caliber missile attacks from the Belarus uh, only uh, there were uh, 1200 uh, aircraft attacks and also 61 uh, Iskander missile attacks uh, intended against the critical infrastructure of Ukraine according to uh, the general staff of ukraine the strategic purpose of the president of the russian federation is still the same to destroy ukraine as a nation the russian federation intends to concentrate uh, efforts uh, in the east and south of ukraine and also checking the uh, readiness of uh, um, Belarusian troops and uh, uh, also uh, 
stirring up the situation in Transnistria region. Uh, these are the elements of uh, the enemy intentions uh, that uh, basically um, consists in holding our troops from regrouping. And also in parallel, uh, the enemy will be taking actions to destabilize uh, the socio-economical and uh, political situation in Ukraine. Uh, based on the situation uh, that is uh, observed, in the nearest time the priorities for the enemy will be intensifying the use of aviation and also missile attacks on the positions of our troops and also the civilian and uh, logistical targets all around Ukraine, the continuation of the total destruction of uh, civilian infrastructure and civilian population. Uh, this is the Syrian experience, as uh, I have pointed out already. In the future, also encircling uh, the uh, United Forces and uh, creating the uh, access to uh, the temporarily occupied uh, Crimean Peninsula and also in the future access to uh, uh, the uh, territory of Moldova, thus blocking uh, Ukrainian access to uh, the seas and also destroying uh, the Ukrainian uh, military arsenals and also blocking the uh, provisions of uh, military equipment and ammunition from our allies. So. In summary, despite the strong efforts of the enemy, um, they are not able to accomplish uh, the goals they have declared, but it's not the time to rest on the laurel laurels. We are doing uh, everything possible to hold the enemy. We will prevail. Thank you. And now, Alexei. Uh, Natoshi from the Operations Department of uh, the National Guard of Ukraine. Hello, uh, everyone who is here. I would like to uh, briefly report on the role and mission of the National Guard of Ukraine that is also implementing uh, military tasks together with uh, the armed forces of Ukraine. Uh, uh, when protecting our countries. We continue defense uh, operations in Slapazhansky, Don Donetsky, Pevdanovsky uh, and Bessarabsky operational uh, regions, uh, uh, including the deblocking of Kharkiv and also uh, holding the enemy in the, uh, uh, Debrivka, uh, Papasna, Kamishovaha, Leman, uh, Hradok, Poltivka, Severodonetsk, Bovrovo, Ustinovka. The main efforts are intended to uh, stop the enemy uh, from moving uh, in Bereslav, uh, Kriverich, Bereslav, Saporizhia axis to uh, protect critical infrastructure objects and uh, also, uh, the uh, grouping of uh, forces uh, that are defending Kyiv are continuing uh, the implementation of uh, their tasks. Also, we are protecting the border with uh, the Republic of Belarus. And we also continue stabilizational uh, operations and implementing the tasks of territorial defense. The main task of those in the northern region to uh, continue holding uh, the uh, borders, uh, the checkpoints, uh, protecting uh, the specially defined uh, uh, assets of infrastructure, the borders of Dnieper and also some uh, international uh, institutions office. In the east, the main efforts are to defend uh, Kharkiv, Slavyansk, and uh, Krasnopilya, to hold the enemy in uh, Dovhenke de Privne, and protect some important government facilities uh, by means of uh, checkpoints. In the uh, central unit, we are uh, taking measures uh, by means of uh, checkpoints 
and also protecting uh, critical infrastructure and the important government facilities such as uh, hospitals, the humanitarian aid hubs, uh, and uh, uh, also the fuel for the transportation. Uh, the uh, southern uh, territorial unit is protecting some important uh, government units for uh, healthcare institutions, three ports, uh, the dam, and uh, also is uh, taken care of for uh, the defense of uh, the sea border. Also is ensuring uh, the observance of uh, the curfew hours in, in certain Ukrainian cities. And in the western region, uh, some consular and diplomatic institutions are uh, being uh, defended, and also the support of uh, the reserves of the National Guard in the readiness uh, condition. Also, uh, some uh, air reconnaissance and uh, 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 the uh, intelligence department has uh, discovered uh, over 1,500 uh, different targets uh, of the enemy, including 762 uh, UAVs and also 190 electronic uh, uh, units of uh, uh, warfare. The total area uh, that has been uh, surveyed over the entire time of work was 82 hectares, and also the rivers of uh, Dnieper uh, near the city of Vyshgorod in total, over uh, 23 kilometers uh, of uh, uh, the rivers, uh, mainly Irpin and Dnipro. And also, uh, we continue to guard uh, the uh, facilities defined by the Cabinet of Ministers. Uh, some measures are uh, taken to find uh, the sabotage groups, and also provisions are made for uh, implementation of uh, the activities imposed by legislations in order to uh, ensure rights and freedoms of the citizens. On a daily basis for this uh, purpose, we are using 6,000 uh, service people uh, and uh, 80 vehicles, uh, 100, uh, uh, 1,100 of uh, people were apprehended. Uh, with uh, uh, suspicions for uh, sabotage activities. And uh, since the very beginning of this uh, aggression, over 300 people were suspected for uh, participation in uh, uh, sabotage groups. And uh, also a number of uh, ammunition pieces and uh, narcotic drugs uh, were uh, also apprehended uh, over the last 20 days. Also some support is uh, provided during the transportation of humanitarian supplies and also, the reserves are being uh, resupplied in terms of human resources. And uh, some uh, additional interesting information for you. Uh, uh, since, since the very beginning, uh, we uh, have destroyed uh, 17 air targets, uh, including uh, two uh, aircrafts, uh, included uh, eight helicopters, uh, three UAVs, uh, one of which was uh, downed by uh, the drafted service people, and uh, they, they, they were using uh, just uh, uh, regular uh, small arms, and thank you, thank you for your attention. So I, I would 
ask our speakers to come back for a series of questions and answers. Yes, dear colleagues. Alexey, the question is to you. I am Volodymyr uh, Runets, uh, ICTV Fakta Tizhnya program. Uh, we have the uh, information that seems contradictory. On the one hand, we hear from Sergei Haidai that 80% uh, of Severodonetsk is not controlled uh, by Ukrainian forces, but uh, yesterday Mariana Bezuhla wrote on uh, her Facebook page that uh, this information was incorrect. Can you share about the actual percentage of the city controlled by uh, the Ukrainian armed forces and how important is this uh, to halt the city and uh, what uh, equipment and in which ways uh, the enemy is trying to get the city and uh, what is the potential uh, danger if the enemy succeeds? Uh, speaking of the importance or unimportance of uh, Ukrainian cities in terms of defense and uh, well actually currently in uh, Severodonetsk uh, there are uh, serious street fights uh, happening and we cannot say that 80 or 60 percent are controlled by the enemy because uh, by the end of uh, Yesterday we had a situation that's different from today's and the current situation is uh, better than yesterday's. Indeed, the situation is tense. Indeed, the battles are going on. Uh, speaking of uh, our uh, troops uh, uh, being retracted from there, it's, it's not happening now. Uh, all the troops, all the Ukrainian troops available there will be uh, used for uh, the implementation of their current tasks. Uh, I will not share any details about the additional troops uh, so that the enemy does not take advantage of this information, but I will re-emphasize once again that Ukraine's armed forces are doing their best to keep uh, the territory under our control and also to bring back the territories uh, that uh, were temporarily occupied by the enemy, especially in uh, some access uh, uh, on the uh, northern and uh, uh, southern areas. Uh, what is the danger? Uh, okay, yes, uh, there is a danger. You're right. In case uh, Severodonetsk uh, is seized, uh, we will have to uh, defend uh, the bank of the river and we would also uh, have to uh, use uh, urban battles. Uh, there are such threats. Uh, there are threats in every case, both uh, tactical and operative level. Right now the situation is dangerous, but uh, still under control. From Greek Television, a question for uh, Mrs. Anna Mallard. Uh, oh, okay. It is announced that uh, there is a German-Greek uh, agreement for transferring some armored vehicles uh, BMP-1 from Greece to Ukraine. Uh, do you believe that uh, these vehicles cover some needs of Ukrainian forces and uh, also do Ukrainian soldiers know how to use them? Thank you. The decision was uh, made by us uh, not to comment on the details of uh, the weapons provided, uh, the numbers, uh, the parties providing the weapons, because the enemy is using this equipment. And in the very beginning of this full-scale invasion, we had cases of contracts being disrupted because of this. So right now we can uh, only discuss the fact that the issue of international support in terms of weapons weapons is becoming increasingly active. As for the training for our troops, if our military are not available or did not have experience before, the training is being provided. We cannot share any more information for security reasons. Thank you. 
Hello, Max Gunter, Reuters uh, agency. Uh, did Ukraine uh, make uh, uh, any uh, promises to Western partners uh, not to use uh, the uh, weapons uh, against targets in the territory of the Russian Federation? The question to Anna Mayer. Ukraine is uh, uh, defending itself in this war. This is uh, what we are always emphasizing. Hello, I'm Vitaly Tkachuk from Ukraine Forum. I have two questions. The first one is about the defenders of uh, Mariupol. What is happening uh, to them right now? Do we uh, uh, have uh, uh, any possibility to hear from them or uh, from the Russians uh, temporarily holding them? Also, we have heard yesterday that uh, 20 uh, communities were liberated in Kherson region. Another first question is probably yours, and uh, the second is to Brigade General. Uh, speaking of uh, Mariupol defenders and uh, Azov Steel defenders, uh, the negotiations are still going on, and uh, 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 this is uh, one of uh, uh, those issues uh, that no, we are not commenting on yet. This is a sensitive information. And currently, there are negotiations. That's what I can share here. And speaking of uh, uh, the advance on the uh, Kherson uh, region, yes, indeed, we are active in that axis. And uh, indeed, uh, we did not hear uh, in, in that message about the exact timing of the liberation of uh, those 20 communities. So I, I cannot comment now whether they were liberated over uh, the last week or the, the last month, but indeed uh, we are active uh, uh, there. Viktor Melnikov, CGTN. That's a question to everyone. Uh, can we uh, consider uh, that uh, this uh, response uh, by uh, Anna Mother about this decision not to comment on weapons uh, being provided, specifically about the American uh, long-range uh, artillery. Uh, does it mean that any decision has been made? And also there is uh, the uh, information that Ukraine and uh, Poland are intending to establish some enterprise uh, to uh, produce uh, some heavy military equipment. Are there any details about that? So in, in your first question, uh, what exactly did you want to ask about? So uh, the United States I, I will help you a bit. So, in the previous briefing, I uh, have given an example about uh, the use of uh, M777. There was indeed such a case. I uh, truly believe that in the nearest briefing, I uh, will be permitted to comment or to give other examples about the, news, uh, the use of uh, systems provided by our partners. Now, speaking about the collaboration with Poland, we probably cannot comment on this. Yes, we are not entitled to give such comments. So, uh, this is indeed something uh, that uh, Hanna is uh, not responsible for, and so yet another question here. Microphone, no, for political branch. Uh, the, the, I'm Andrea Romoli, journalist from RAI National. Uh, for political branch, you, uh, Deputy Minister. Because a political question, not military question. Okay. Uh, the, pocket, the, the pocket of defense in Donbass region, uh, that several Donetsk pocket of uh, defense, is now not more large, large, not more than 12 kilometers. In the, which means, uh, the question is, are you ready to retreat your soldier 
in order to prevent they will be surrounded by a Russian if the sacks will be closed. <laughs> this actually is a uh, military uh, question. So uh, are our troops ready to withdraw in order to uh, in order to avoid uh, the situation of encirclement in in Donbas region? Yeah. Yes, the enemy intends to encircle our troops, but uh, I, I wouldn't uh, define this in such critical terms. Uh, the military are ready for any developments uh, on the battlefield, but all the mm, actions taken by uh, the service people and the units are intended to accomplish uh, a certain goal, a certain vision. Right now, we uh, do not have uh, in the vision of the general staff for our troops to withdraw uh, from there, from the territories uh, you were mentioning. As of now, there is indeed threat. The enemy is indeed trying to do that, but uh, right now we don't see uh, the needs to withdraw. Thank you. Thank you for uh, finding time, uh, for joining us, and for sharing this information. Thank you so much, and see each other at the next meetings.